Hi. Now that's what I call a Raphael worthy welcome. I mean, wow. So I assume all you guys are Jane the Virgin fans. Can we talk about the finale for a second? Oh, wow, can we? Well, I'm gonna make the executive decision that we shall talk then about we shall. the finale. Did you guys watch the finale? Yeah. What do we make of Raphael not declaring his love for Jane? Did you think that was good, bad, the right choice, the wrong choice? You know, believe it or not, it was one of my favorite moments that Raphael's had in the whole two seasons. Because it was, look, he, I think when you really love someone, then you sacrifice your own happiness for theirs. And I think that was a really cool example of him in that moment seeing, oh wow, like here's the mother of my child. She's really happy. Like I'm not, like, I'm not gonna ruin that for her. And I really respected Raphael. It was like, a, it was a cool moment where I as Justin really respected that choice. And I love the writers for allowing, uh, allowing that to happen. But it was cool because as an actor, I got to do both. I got to have that moment of like, I love you, and then I got to pull it completely back and have that like, no, I'm gonna do the right thing moment. That's right, because yeah. you guys shot it both ways. We shot it both ways, which was really cool. Now, you guys, the ending of season two, your poor character oh my God. is in a spate of trouble. Oh my God, I know. You guys had Yael on the show earlier this week, I think. Yeah, you guys had Yael, who plays Petra on the show, I think, earlier. We did. Yes, there, we did. There was and a juicy she, little scene with... And she didn't give anything away. Uh, yeah. I mean, th th that was amazing. Did yeah. you guys see that coming? No. You should see these table reads. We, like, throw things. We're just... It's just complete shock of, like, various stages of, like, how is... It, who thought of that? Like, these people are nuts. But, yeah, it was, it's crazy. The, who knows what's going to happen? They don't tell us anything. And if they did then we'd have to be sworn to secrecy because it's a telenovela, which means you can go like that. Do you think Raphael will ever figure out that he's with, Agne I can't pronounce her name. Agneska? Agneska, as opposed to Petra? I hope so. Dear I God, hope so. I hope so. Dear God, I hope so. I think it, it'll have to happen pretty quickly, I'm sure. Um, and I, I, But they haven't told us much about that. So it's, it's, I don't know, I know the same as you guys. I have no idea where it's going. And you guys just got renewed for season three, which, yeah. hi, the yeah. spoiler alert, surprising no one, um, even though I guess that's always a good feeling to know that you have a job going in, even though I think the show's fans, yeah. many, many fans, no one was surprised that it got renewed, let's put it that way. Well, anytime you can get to do what you love um, and know that there's a another year of it coming and you know I have a little daughter and being able to support my family at the same time like being able to play a character that I love on a show that clearly you know is adored and loved is such a blessing it's hard to be an actor in this business right now there are there are so few shows that are on the air that do 22 episodes that go and go and go and go um, so we're just blessed we're so grateful how did you get the role how did I get the role um, I auditioned. Uh, it's a funny story. I had actually left acting uh, to start a production company. Because you had said that you felt that, that acting wasn't giving back enough, that it was too, yeah, I just too felt like, superficial. Yeah, I just felt like I was kind of a, a puppet. I was just doing, I was just constantly getting rejected. I was, I was uh, being told no all the time. And then when I was told yes, I was saying somebody else's lines here or there. And there, there wasn't any, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was being of service to humanity. And I think that's one of the things that we all, there's going to be a point in all of our lives where we look in the mirror one day and we, we ask ourselves, how, are, how am I being of service to the world? How am I being of benefit to the human race? Um, and I think what's cool is that you can figure out how to do that with anything that you do. Um, you know, with anything. So that for me wasn't happening. <clears throat> so I realized my, you know, one of my true callings was to direct and to create stories that I felt mattered. Long story short, I was with a, uh, my wife had introduced me to her manager, um, and I was looking for a new directing manager, and I ended up saying, well, you know, at one point, maybe, you know, I could audition every once in a while for fun, just to keep the muscle warm, and it was the second one they sent me. This, and Jane the Virgin was the second one they sent me, and I had read the sides because my wife had auditioned for Petra. And I was like, this Raphael character seems pretty interesting. Who's going to... 
And I was thinking, I was imagining, like, if she got it, like, who's this guy she's going to have to be making out with? Like, I wonder, wonder if he's going to be handsome or not. And, uh, yeah, and then randomly they said I'm auditioning for Raphael, and then two days later, that was it. Did you have to have a chemistry read with Gina? Yeah, Gina and I had a chemistry read, and clearly there was none. Uh, Obviously. Just zero, just nothing there. Uh, please, Gina could have chemistry with a rock. That's what I, that's what I think. Uh, which is why I think the love triangle works so well, because you can, you, know, you can see her character with Michael is different than her character with Raphael. There's just, she's just got so much chemistry just to share. And she's got some dance moves as well. And some dance moves. Um, you said in an interview, I think it was with Cosmo, that you are literally surrounded by babies in every facet of your life, on the show, at home, and now with this app. Yeah. So let's talk about the app. Sure. Uh, do you guys know about Belly Bump? Yeah. You guys, so, uh, so when my wife was pregnant with Maya, I wanted to make a time-lapse movie of her growing belly because I'd seen these really cool ones on YouTube and, and they just seemed so creative and I was like, these husbands are amazing. I wanna be like as good as them. Um, and I kept forgetting because you gotta take a picture like every day or every couple days and then you have to line it up perfectly. And I, I'm a filmmaker and I'm good with that stuff and it was hard, it was hard to do. And I realized like, well, you know, this is kind of, this could be like the baby book of the future. And women, like, capturing and sharing your pregnancy story is incredible. I mean, you get to be pregnant for most people once, twice. Some people never get to be pregnant. And they have to experience through other, through other people. It's one of the greatest joys of life that you could possibly have. So I was like, what if we could create a way to help women capture and share their story in, like, kind of the new, you know, 2016 on way uh, via a time-lapse movie? So we built Belly Bump. And it was also a cool way for men to be involved in their wives' pregnancies, or for surrogates, and, you know, for anything. And, uh, so yeah, I was way just actually thinking that, like, if yeah. you're not present every day for it, then Exactly, that's and everybody has family all over the world, and, you know, in our attention span, we're also ADD now, so, like, if I could see the whole pregnancy in 20 seconds, like, how cool is that? And then when your baby's born, we wanted to make it for new moms, so when your baby's born, or if your kid's two, or five, or 32, uh, you take a picture every day of your baby. And, or your child, and you can watch the face change. It's like you press the button and it just compresses it all into a movie for you. So we try to make it as simple and foolproof as possible. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. So it just came out this week. It's, gen it's actually completely genius. Like it's one of those things where you're like, how has this never existed before? It just, yeah, and I think it has to different degrees, but we wanted to build it in a way that was like, just you could, you know, your baby could do it. Like we wanted it to be as simple as possible. You like line it up and, yeah, and then what's cool is when it reminds you to take the photo, which was the big thing for me, because I kept forgetting. And if you've been pregnant, it's pregnancy brain is legit, it's real. There should be scientific documented papers about it somewhere. It's like you just forget, because I, I don't and know. And it's contagious. And it's contagious, because yeah, yeah. Um, so it reminds you to take the pictures, and then you can see the previous day's photos and line it up perfectly, and yeah, it's fun. It's a fun little thing on the side. And so, Will you have another kid that you will then use this on? I hope so. I hope so. Right now, my wife's just keeping me away from her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at some point, we're definitely going to have another Like, stay busy with Mateo. She's just like, show. yeah, between Maya and my 50, 55 kids on Jane the Virgin, I think I'm... How many kids do you have now? Three, I don't right? even... I can't keep track I of them. I think three. The twins it's kind of amazing that here's a guy that didn't, like, he had one sample left somewhere, and now he's got three kids. Yeah, yeah it's with zero sex. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And he stuck with Petra slash Anesh, a, 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 I know. A, do it again, please. Aneska. 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 I don't know why I have such a hard time with that name. When you read the script, did it specify that you had to have your shirt off a lot? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. No, it didn't. It didn't, it just kind of uh, magically appeared and then reappeared and then reappeared and then that was the kind of the joke of the first season. <laughs> the slow motion, like, but at least I like that they worked it into the story, you know, and they kind of made fun of it a little bit. What are you guys laughing at? <laughs> You've just got a whole like squadron of fans out there is, yeah. is what I'm thinking. Hey, my wife, my wife and daughter just showed up. Hi, sweetheart. Yay. 
Oh, she's going to do a collective awe. That's adorable. How do you, I mean, you're, you have a production company. We're going to talk about your series in a little bit. Your amazing, amazing, amazing series that's coming to the CW. You have the app. You have a full-time acting career. Do you sleep? Uh, a little. A little bit. Uh, I, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I guess not. Sometimes. Depends on the day. Do you, have you found more fulfillment now? Oh, yeah. For sure, right? I think, I think that's, uh, for me, it's the, the motivating factor of my day is waking up and figuring out how I can do something that um, can help in some way today. And it's just, I love to, I, I like that it's called build because I love to build things. I think that's one of the most exciting things about life. Um, and, you know, it's not about, you know, I know, you know, we're in the same building as Huffington Post and there's the whole sleep thing, but it's, I don't think it's necessarily about the sleep. I think it's about finding your purpose. And um, I'm really purpose driven. And uh, I wake up in the morning and like I'm excited for the day. And sometimes it's hard to get up in the morning, um, especially with a 10 month old daughter who's teething and going through sleep regression. Thank God I have an amazing wife who helps. Um, but I think you find the time. There's a quote, there's a quote on my arm. It says, um, it's from the Baha'i writings. Abdul Baha says, where there's love, nothing is too much trouble and there's always time. And uh, I've kind of adapted that as like my philosophy in both life and in my marriage and in my personal relationships and in my work relationships. It's like, okay, like I love it. There's love, then there's time. We'll figure it out. And has playing Raphael reawakened your love of acting? I mean, I would assume yes, being on a show oh, yeah. of this quality. Oh yeah, but it's, yeah, because it's so complex. I mean, you have, you have a, a half hour sitcom and a one hour drama combined in the same show. And I get to kind of play the one hour drama um, and try to find a way to balance the, the comedy and the drama in like this grounded, I mean like how do you react if somebody tells you the things that Raphael hears? Like, that's what I constantly think about. It's like, how do you react to, like, all the, you know, to your stepmother being Mutter, who's, like, this crime lord who stabs you in the neck, and then in the same sentence, you either, then you wake up, and the guy who finds you is the person that you're, you know, the person that you love is dating, and then there's a baby, and two babies. I mean, it's crazy. But how do you play that from, like, a real, sincere place? And I think that's what's awakened my love in, in, with acting, is finding a way to, like, make it real. Um, and not like over dramatic or anything like that. Not to mention that you also are the father of girls named Anna and Anna and uh, Anna and Elsa. All right. And that that in and of itself <laughs> could be a sitcom. And like not playing in the you know like being like oh I love this name you know and like being real and sincere about it yeah that's what makes it funny you know comedy is just drama heightened so. None, nothing on the show is played for laughs. Like it's played with total sincerity. Total sincerity. Even even Rogelio, who plays Jaime Camille. Yeah. I mean, you have to believe the craziness that's happening. You know, otherwise you don't believe it. And we have to, on a slightly more serious note, you also are the creator of an amazing online series called My Last Days that deals with terminal illness, which is something that most people don't acknowledge and don't want to talk about. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, how did you come to do this? Yeah, so um, for as long as I can remember, I've always been fascinated by this idea that we're one day going to die because I don't understand it. And frankly, I don't think any human being on the planet does or can. And if they do understand it, then I would just, I would question whether they're actually an alien or not. Um, and I, I remember being young and I would hear somebody was sick or somebody was dying and my instinct when I was young was I wanted to go and be with them and talk to them. You know, when my grandparents were sick when I was younger, I would want to fly out there and be with them. And every time I left my grandparents, I would always have this feeling of like, is this the last time I'm going to see them? Like, I need to make sure that I, like, that I hug them enough or... It was always in my mind. And as I got older and I reached my mid-20s and I left acting and I was having that kind of existential crisis of what it is that I'm supposed to do, that was something that I kept thinking about. It was like, am I, if I were to die tomorrow, did I do enough? Um, am I living the life that I really want to live? Am I living a life with purpose? Am I waking up every day and am I happy, you know, with, with not just what I have, but what I'm giving? At the end of the night, am I going to sleep and feeling like I did good that day? Um, and the answer was no. 
Um, and a lot of the time, the answer is no. And I thought, well, if the answer is no for me, and I'm kind of in touch with that, I, I can only imagine what it's like for the rest of the world. You know? And we live in an age where like, we're so connected with our phones, like we're Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. I'm one of them. Um, but how often do we look up and we connect here? And so I thought, if we could create a show for millennials and for Gen Z that would inspire them through the stories of real life superheroes that are dealing with their own, um, their own mortality, and if we could inspire them to live, then maybe we could do something good in the world. And uh, we created My Last Days. We partnered with my friends, Rain Wilson, at Soul Pancake. And, um, and we put it on. It was one of their first shows. And everyone said it would never work. People like you would never watch a show like this. Because it's depressing. Because it's depressing. But I kept saying, this isn't a show about dying. It's a show about living. It's a show about life. Like, it's a show that focuses and reminds us why today is so important. And uh, it became one of the most watched documentary series online ever. And uh, through that, we founded and built Wayfair Entertainment, which is uh, my production company. And um, yeah, and so now we just announced yesterday with the CW that uh, it's going to be premiering as a three-night special event uh, this summer in August. So uh, yeah, six, six new stories, six amazing real-life superheroes that uh, if you guys watch it and you watch the three nights, I guarantee you, you'll have a big shift in perspective. Well, and it's such, it's such, I don't want to say thorny issue, but I guess it is a thorny issue because I think all of us have, you know, unless you live a very charm life, all of us have dealt with death of our nearest and dearest. Or you and, will at some point. Yeah. Or, yeah, and you don't know how to react. You don't know how to talk about it. You don't know how to reach out to other people or the person who's sick. And I feel like your series really does, like it really gives insights without patronizing Thank anyone. Thank you. It's just, it's an uncomfortable thing because at one point it is the only absolute truth that- Death and taxes. That everybody in this room at one point will no longer be here. We will only be leaving our actions. That's it. And it's not anyone's fault, but we don't know how to talk about it. It's taboo here, you know? You find out your friend's sick or your friend's dying, like, a lot of, it's true. Unfortunately, a lot of people run away, you know? I, there's people that we've showcased on our show that have found out they're dying and then they lose their friends, which is like, can you imagine? It's like the worst thing ever. Now, it's not anyone's fault, but it shows that we're afraid of it. We don't know how to handle it or we don't know how to talk about it. But what if it didn't have to be a depressing thing? What if it could, what if it could be something that brought us all together, a unifying thing, you know? As one of my partners at Wayfair says, you know, it's colorblind. It treats us all the same. But if we think about it, it doesn't mean we have to be depressed. What if we could be inspired? What if, what if we thought about our own mortality and we used it as a way to say, well, how am I gonna live today? You know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. How am I gonna live today? Am I gonna make my life a beautiful story? As, you know, quoting Ryan Woods from the first season of My Last Days. Um, and that's what the show's about. It's just teaching us how to live. How did you develop your own attitude? Because I think if I could have 1% of what you have, my days would be much better. Uh, to be very, very honest, uh, growing up in the Baha'i faith for me um, and learning that uh, this is, you know, there's, there's some quotes in the faith that talk about how we're here on this, in this life um, for like this long in the scope of, if you think about our soul, you know, even scientifically, our soul is, you know, it's, no one can explain what it is. Was it ever created? You know, can it be destroyed? The answer is no, it's energy. So it just must take a new form at some point. <clears throat> so growing up in a faith that taught, like, it's not about, it's not about this, it's about where you're going, and it's about making sure that this is serving that, you know? It's like you go to the gym, you're not going to the gym to work out your muscles for the gym, no, you go to the gym to work out your muscles for after the gym, for when you're training for the marathon, or because you want to look good when you take your shirt off on Jane the Virgin, or whatever it is. Um, and that's what life is. Life, life is the workshop here. And I think that that has informed a lot of, uh, of my life. And this is the idea that we're here to help each other. We're here to be of service. You know? And the, the idea of, of trying to remove your ego as much as you possibly can, because everything in this world is constructed to build your ego and trying to figure out how to 
take that, suppress it, and realize that like we are so much more than our human bodies and our forms. We are walking, living, breathing souls that are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Um, so yeah, I would attribute that, and I would attribute it to a lot of hardship and trials and learning, um, which I'm sure you can relate to and understanding, because you know, if we don't go through hardship in our lives, then, you know. You don't really have perspective. You don't have perspective. It's like you don't go to the gym and talk on your phone the whole time. Your, your muscles aren't going to grow. Um, you'll never be on Jane the Virgin. You'll never be off. on Jane the Virgin taking your shirt off, which is why I'm here to, that was what I wanted to say. So. And before we throw it to our lovely audience, um, how many shirtless scenes do you want Raphael to have in season three? Like if you could, uh, like an approximation, like 20%, 35%. Just work with me here. That's like, how many, what about you guys? 10,000. 10 percent? 10,000, all of them. All of them. <laughs> um, when necessary, I'm okay with it. When necessary. For your craft. For my craft. Superfluous, shirtless scenes, I don't necessarily think serve which is why I love our show. Is I don't I don't feel like there were any superfluous superfluous. No, no, no. Everything on the show makes sense. But like you know, if it if it works and if it helps and it you know, well, I don't know. That's a I'm sure that's an awful question. That's a great question. <laughs> I will argue that question. Okay, we'll argue with it. <laughs> and now questions from our audience. Hi, my name is Margo Graff. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so I actually was with Yael at the UTA event on Monday, and now I'm here with you. So it's like a Jane the Virgin whole week, which I'm so in love with. Um, but my question comes as a student in a conservatory right now, New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts. I'm on my break, um, and I'm kind of always looking into new ways to still stay into my craft, my training, be warmed up vocally, physically when I'm you know, on break, or whether it is I'm not on set filming something or you know, working about to go on stage. How do you stay kind of in the moment and fully warmed up physically, vocally when you're not, you know, working on set or when you're just about to kind of go on set? That's a really good question. Um, for, for me, look, I'm not your, let's be honest, you're probably a way better actor than me. <laughs> um, I'm not your normal classically trained conservatory actor. Uh, I'm much more of a, a director that acts. And what keeps me warm is life. You know, when I'm walking down the street, like today I was sitting down at the park, at this park over here uh, by NYU, Washington, Washington Square. Square Park. And I was sitting down and uh, I just, I hadn't had a chance to sit down in a while and just be my, by myself. And I sat and I just started watching people. And I just am so fascinated and interested and in, like, what is that guy doing? Or why is that person doing that? Or you know, there was this guy. That <laughs> there was this, this guy that had his headphones on and very tight pants, and he was shirtless and sweaty. And this, in a, and there was like you know hundreds of people around, and he was like, you know, doing all these like back bends and like things, and <laughs> like very clearly showing off his stuff. And I was just imagining like it's so easy to judge that person, but what can I get in his mind and figure out why he's doing that and come up with a story that instead of me looking at it and you know having like an opinion of why it's wrong, feeling like, well, how, why is he doing that? Like, what's his story? Like, you know, why does he need the attention? And whatever that is. And I think that for me is um, at least what the little thing that I try to bring to my craft is why someone does something and I pay attention like that, so. Hi. Hi. Hey. Um, so you have this incredible like entrepreneurial spirit I was wondering where that passion came from and if there was another exciting business venture you'd want to try out in the future or like industry or something. Oh man, so many. Yeah, I would tell you about my business ventures that I want to start, but then there's a couple million people that are probably, that have access to this, so I don't know if that'd be a good idea. Uh, rule number one of being an entrepreneur, keep your secrets until you actually do something with them. Um, my father. My dad uh, started the product placement industry in the early 80s. He was one of the first people to recognize that there was a business from taking advertising and uh, putting them in movies and helping the advertising pay for the movies or for the TV shows. And so I grew up watching my dad 
um, come up with all these crazy ideas. And he was the first person, and I mean, I mean, to, to me, he was the first person um, that called that one day something like this would be possible, that um, brands would be merging um, with media and there would be no more commercials or commercials would be integrated. Um, he called it interactive television. This was before the days of uh, the internet. So I think watching my dad and seeing him take ideas and create from them was a big, big thing for me. I also think that creating things is so spiritual by nature, even if you don't believe in something like that. Because these things come through us. These ideas come through us. And how selfish of, of us if we don't actually do something with them. We all have great ideas. So I, what I say is write them down. And if like, they're good, then take action. You know, there's a quote from the Baha'i Writings that says, the, by faith, the definition of faith is first conscious knowledge and then the practice of good deeds. So you know something and then you do something. So on one sense, you're talking about this is what f it means to be spiritual or have faith. You know something and then you do it. But then if you can apply that to creating a business, you know something and then you do it. You don't just know something. Because if you know something and then you never do something with it, then like you're not being of service to anybody. And you can't just do something without knowing something because then you're just an idiot. <laughs> but it's the combination of the two that make it so cool and fun. So building and creating to me is kind of divinely inspired as well. Great answer, and we have time for one more question, please. Hello, um, what is your favorite moment in filming My Last Days? Oh my God. Wow, that's a really good question. We've made thir 13 or 14 documentaries now. We shot the six that you guys will see this summer, we shot them last summer. Um, and every documentary has a moment where we orchestrate a special moment for the person who's dying in a way where, look, we can never change the fact that they're, that they're sick, but we can give them something that they might have not been able to experience. I think, uh, I think when we gave Zach Sobiak the music video of Clouds, when we got all the celebrities to lip sync Clouds, and if you haven't seen it, I encourage you guys to watch it. You can watch it on the Soul Pancake YouTube channel. Um, we were there shooting the whole week, and uh, we had been trying to get all these celebrities to lip sing the song, but we were also filming the documentary with him at the same time. And every time I found out that he liked somebody else, I would make phone calls, and me and my partner Ahmed were making phone calls, being like, how do we get this person, or how do we get this person, or how do we get the Lumineers? The Lumineers were like the biggest band in the world that, like three years ago when we were shooting. Um, and then we stayed up all night and uh, we had an editor in LA and we were just editing and trying to make it happen and then we presented it to him on a Friday, the last day we were there and we got to see his reaction and for us, that moment was so huge because here is this kid who's 17, who lives in Minnesota, who accidentally became famous because he, he wrote a song dealing with his own mortality and he got to see all these super famous people that he idolizes lip syncing his song and, uh, and we did it with, they had like this family reunion and so his grandma, he got to sit next to his grandma, and like everybody was there. And it was to me the epitome of what the show's about. It's like celebrating life. Like that moment was rich, and it was full, and it was happy, and it was sad. It was everything that life is all in one moment. So. And Belly Bump is out now. Yeah, bellybump.co, one word if you search it in the App Store. And Jane the Virgin, do we have a return date yet or not yet? I don't think, they haven't announced that yet, but it's probably fall. sometime in, yeah, Remember, fall. Yeah. yeah, on the CW. Thank you so much, Justin. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys.